Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the webinar, No Money, No Problem. Um, we are so glad that you decided to join us tonight. I know we always have some folks coming in later after we get started, because I guess sometimes it's hard to get here right at seven, but uh, we did put a note out there that um, we are recording and it will be on our website. Uh, sometime tomorrow. So if you miss something, don't worry, it will be out there. Also, I just sent a note out to make sure you select either up in the top right hand corner under audio, either um, your computer or that you have selected your phone. If your phone, you've got a dial in number with an access code, um, but just make sure that you can hear. Um, also, tonight, we um, have Beth Smith going to present the webinar, and w as we get started and we do get it recorded, she's going to tell you where you can review this after tomorrow and access your um, assessment um, survey and the certificate for attending. You will be getting a short survey that comes directly as soon as we end the webinar, but then she will show you where to get the assessment where to go to uh, fill out the assessment with the certificate. So it's two different items. Um, but with that said, we'd like to get started and I'm gonna turn it over to Beth. Good evening, everyone. I hope everyone's having had a great day. Uh, my name is Beth Smith. I'm one of the partners with GWiz. That's Sherry Mayberry on the line who was just doing the introductions. And we're very happy to have you with us, as she said. This is going to be a very interactive webinar. So there's a question box where you can click on question. And I'm going to be asking you throughout this webinar to type your ideas into that box. And then Sherry will relay them. Do not feel like you need to write all of this down because we're going to be sharing a lot of ideas. After tomorrow, when we post the recorded webinar, I will type up the ideas that people have shared and we will post that as a PDF handout. So you're welcome to write things down tonight or you can just sit back, relax and enjoy and participate and then I'll get that handout ready for you tomorrow. So with that said, let's get started. No money, no problem. So what are we gonna to learn tonight? Well, one of the most important things that we're gonna talk about is how household materials, things you have on hand, can be learning materials. Too often in education, we're meant to believe that you have to have a $300 water table in order for an activity to be meaningful and, and, and of value, and that is just not true. Um, a bin of water can just work as well as a fancy water table. So we're gonna talk about a couple different types of household materials that we can use for many different learning activities and how one material, say a plastic cup, can address many different developmental areas depending on the experiences that you plan. We're also gonna talk about, excuse me, adapting activities for different developmental levels because we know that many of you are family child care providers who have everyone from infants through school age, especially right now with the way public schools and everything is happening with online school, um, the world is changing fast and rapidly. So um, we'll talk about that. And evaluating for household materials for safety is obviously of the utmost importance. Um, even things like the plastic cap on a water bottle can be dangerous in the hands of a toddler. So we'll talk about how you do evaluate for safety. And then also using social media and you think places like YouTube for inspiration and sharing. Um, that's one of the goals of this webinar actually is to encourage you to share your ideas so we can learn from each other because it's a very powerful tool. And so during this webinar, like I said, you're going to be asked, in fact, very short, shortly here to participate. And I hope that everyone will take advantage of that because again, everybody has great ideas to share and, and we learn from each other. Oops, excuse me, hit the wrong button. Oh. <laughs> All right, computer, stop. All right, so learning happens everywhere, um, even in the mud. Uh, you are very aware of this. So when you think about your day and you think about the children, it's not just the activities that you plan as quote unquote learning activities. It's times like brushing your teeth, washing your hands, getting ready for nap, um, eating your meals, even pick up and drop off outside playtime, learning happens everywhere. And 
when you're in a family child care home, you have a lot of household materials that you use every day that can be teaching and learning tools just as they are tools that you use during your regular everyday activities. So we're going to explore some of those materials during this webinar, but there are many, many more that you could possibly use. So we're going to get busy and we're going to get you participating right now. So as you know, there are many different developmental areas and in uh, our curriculum that we produce, we cover 10 of those. What I've done over here is I've made a list of developmental areas, uh, literacy books, science, math, art, manipulative, which would include things like sand and water, uh, dramatic play, blocks, gross motor, and health. And what I would like you to do is I would like you to think about these colorful plastic cups. Uh, I just bought, I don't know how many hundred of these at BJ's um, for the summer, and they're very inexpensive and you can use them for lots of things. So what I would like you to do is pick two of those developmental areas over there and think of an activity that you could do that would address them. And then type your suggestion in the question box. So for instance, let's talk about um, blocks right? These are great for stacking. Uh, many years ago, there, was, there, there were things called stacking cups when my kids were in elementary school, and they were like the biggest thing ever. Well, you could do something similar with that, where they actually build structures with the cups. And as they build, they would practice problem-solving skills. Um, there would be some science involved, because you'd have to figure out, okay, how do I stack these so they do not fall down? Obviously, find motor control. So what I would like you to do is think about the colorful plastic cups pictured here. And again, Again, in the question box, type an activity that you could do with those plastic cups. And if you can, identify at least two areas that it would address. And then I'm going to, Sherry's going to unmute herself and she's going to share. Now, again, feel free to write these down or we're going to, this webinar records all the suggestions that you type in the question box. So I can go back later and compile them into a list that we can then post with the recording of the website, of the webinar. All right, so Sherry, let's see what everybody's coming up with out there. We are already getting some responses. Uh, first one, math, adding and subtracting cups or group by color. Um, can work on shapes and stamp two sizes of circles um, and language development, large and small muscles, I believe is what. Art, um, use the cups to create art pieces, color, sorting, uh, dramatic play, using the house to play restaurants. Uh, robot making, science, dramatic play. So uh, really quick and good. Yes, everybody's on the ball tonight. <laughs> Do some more. During snack, offer measurements on, on water uh, in all areas, math and dramatic play. Um, art, make clucking birds with string through it. <laughs> oh, that sounds like fun. Uh, science, measure liquids and, math, and also with math, use cups mm -hmm. to count colors. Uh, language, as with vocabulary, what, hold on one second. Gross motor, move cups to different areas as relay races. Hide and seek, hide, hide social and emotional cue cards in the cups and they play to find the emotion. Those are great, thank you. Excellent ideas. Great. I'm glad to see everybody participating. This is fantastic because, like I said, I'm going to type up all these ideas and then you'll have them all for your records. Perfect. All right. Let's keep going. All right. So here's a little guy, which happens to be my son, who's now 19 and was obviously not 19 in this picture. And he was out in the backyard and he had a little cup and he was filling a big bucket with that cup. So I'm calling this activity, How Many Cups? So let's say you have a bucket and let's say you have plastic cups like we just looked at. One of the things that you could do is how many cups? How many cups would it take to fill that bucket with say dirt or sand or leaves? And the thing is gonna be different because of the different types of material. So if you're using leaves because they're not as dense as say dirt, it might only take 10 cups to fill the bucket. But if you're using dirt, it might take maybe 12 cups. So the point of this is you have a simple, and that actually was a, a bucket from a, I believe a shrub that we had planted that was left over. Um, you have things that you're gonna have on hand, but you can address all these diff different developmental areas. So obviously with math, counting the number it's gonna take to fill it. 
science predicting you know how many cups of leaves versus how many cups of sand versus how many cups of dirt approaches to learning you know we have to we have to demonstrate persistence right um, this may be an entirely new experience for us we have to work welcome welcome new experiences and cooperation if you're doing it as a group right then everybody can participate together logic and reasoning obviously your problem solving physical development it's fine motor control because you're filling the small cup with whatever the material is and you're dumping it in the bucket and then social and emotional development particularly if you're doing this as a group experience where they're working together to see how many cups it takes to fill that large bucket so the point being very simple things that you have around your house can turn into learning experiment experiences that can address many many developmental areas so that's the key really is to look at the things you have and think about how could I use it a and then B what developmental areas or what skills could I address when I do the experience that I have planned for that for that typical for that material so here are some common household materials that you probably have on hand disposable plates now they come in many different varieties right I have an entire cabinet of party plates that were for birthdays or Mother's Day or Father's Day or Christmas or Halloween or whenever anyway I have all these different party plates I also have plastic plates I have paper plates I have some even some styrofoam plates and they all come in different sizes so simple things like disposable plates can be amazing um, tools to use in many different ways Plastic water bottles, obviously, that have been cleaned and sanitized. Again, the lids can be a situation. Um, if you're going to use the lids, they need to be glued and duct taped to secure them. So let's say you're making a sensory bottle or something along those lines. You'll want to make sure you secure those lids. Paper grocery bags, definitely not plastic, but paper. A lot of grocery stores now, they give you the option of paper or plastic, and in some states, that's the only option you have is paper. Um, and if you go to them and you say, hey, you know, could you give me a handful of those paper bags because I'm using with my, my children and my, um, my child care program, most of them will be more than happy to give them to you. Clothes baskets, couch cushions, blankets, folding tables, plastic mixing bowls, baking sheets, all of these things are things you should have around the house. They're also, a lot of them, particularly things like plastic mixing bowls, baking sheets, things you can find at a thrift store for very, very little money. Um, so especially things like cooking spoons, people are always giving away cooking spoons that there's not anything really necessarily wrong with them. They're just old, right? But they'd still work great for sand or water or dirt or paint so um, if you have a thrift store definitely check out some of the materials you could add that wouldn't cost you a lot of money and ask your parents or guardians to send in anything they might have I have an entire drawer of old stuff that I would be happy to donate to somebody because it's going to end up at the thrift store so just ask that's also a wonderful way to promote family involvement something as simple as hey I'm looking for some old cooking utensils that are safe to use with children do you have any and then the children can help their parents or guardians look in those drawers to see if there's anything they could possibly donate to you okay in the question box share some other things that you think you have around your house that would be excellent common household materials you could use as teaching tools um, something maybe that's not on this list that you think that you do use already or you think would be a good material to use Butter tubs, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. uh, pots and pans. Um, oh, uh, what, bear with me. Butter bowls and pot tins, old pots and pans for, uh, for mud kitchen, uh, plastic straws, cupcake holders. Those are Ice so tea. much fun ice cube trays yep mm. muffin tins cupcake tins yeah all those are great things excellent the point being that you have oh, a lot of these one more 
Beth, paper towel rolls. I for, that is such a classic. Paper towels and toilet paper rolls. How many <laughs> things can you do with those? Coffee filters and egg cartons. Okay. And cookie cutters. Those are all good. Thank you. Those were just good ones. So I just wanted to bring them up. Excellent. Excellent. And then we could add to this list for on and on and on. We could spend hours adding to this list because there's so many things like clothespins, right? Um, the pinch type clothespins. They come in very handy for all kinds of things. I just picked a bag of I think 50 of them up at Home Depot, it was $2.97. So point being, take a look around what you have and then think about how you could use that for learning experiences with the children. Great, all right. So let's talk about an old T-shirt. I have drawers of old T-shirts, you probably have old drawers of T-shirts, and T-shirts come in all different kinds of sizes, shapes, colors, some have logos, some have print, and there's so many different ways you could use them. So here's just a few ideas of how you could use them with different developmental levels. Um, infants and toddlers, so cut them up into chunks and clip them in those clothespins I was just talking about, so it's like a handle, right? And then they can use them for painting. So then they're addressing the creative arts area because they're creating with with a different unique material which is actually part of logic and reasoning as well um, and then physical development and health because they're building fine motor control you could talk about what happens as they paint and then that adds an element of language and also social and emotional development because you're engaging with that child all right so with the preschoolers they could explore using pieces of t-shirt in different ways for painting. In other words, cut up the t-shirts, put out some clothespins, put out some heck, paper towel rolls, um, or even some plastic lids, and let them explore and figure out how they want to use these things for painting. Uh, that really cha challenges them to think beyond the simplistic into more complex. And they can they can predict, you know, well, it's, is it going to work? Is it not going to work? How can I make it work better? That's a lot of science, right? And that's also a lot of problem solving or logic and reasoning. Prompt the children to share their discoveries verbally with open-ended questions as you're engaging with them. You know, what do you think is going to happen when? Why do you think that happened? Those open-ended questions are really important for opening the door to conversations. And encourage the children to share what they like and they don't like about painting with old t-shirts. Um, that's a really important part of social and emotional development. And maybe they can even cooperate and figure out how they could use the pieces together to do something. So the point being, yet again, that a simple material like an old t-shirt can be used for many, in many different ways. Okay, so this is just to get you thinking about different developmental levels and how you could use one material with different developmental air, different developmental levels in different ways. All right, so you are now going to be back on deck. Here we have those plastic water bottles that we talked about, and remember the safety concerns with the lids. What I would like you to do is think of an activity you could plan that would use these plastic water bottles. And in the question box, you're going to indicate the age group, developmental age, you're going to focus on. So it might be toddlers, it could be threes. And because right now we have such a plethora of providers who are now going to be having school-age children all day, if you want to think about school-age children, that's great too. Because remember, I'm going to type all this up and put it out there for everyone to download once we've got it posted. Um, and what developmental areas would it address? Okay. So for instance, let's say I'm going to do something with my, my school age children. And we're going to actually cut the tops off of these and look through them and then talk about how things look different when you look through a water bottle and why is that and, and tie in science um, and tie in language. They could even approach it like a scientist where it's a scientific, they make a hypothesis, then they write down their predictions, I mean, including their predictions about what's going to happen. Then they write out the steps of their experiment, what they did and what the results were. So they could even go through the whole scientific process, right? So what I would like you to do again is think of an age group first, okay? What, what age group are you going to focus on? And focus on a developmental age, not just necessarily a chronological age. What activity would you plan? 
that would use these plastic water bottles. And notice they're all different sizes, shapes, um, and then what developmental areas. And then you can type those in the question box. Sherry will unmute herself and we'll share some of them. We'll probably have so many we can't share them all because we want to keep moving, but um, she will share them all. And don't worry, I will put them all on the handout when I get that together. Yeah, there's a couple that we've already missed on some other items, but um, thank goodness Beth's going to, we'll get it back to you tomorrow. Um, so pouring water from bottle to bottle, ask children to predict which ones hold more and how many of the smaller ones will fit into the bigger ones, will it take to fill the bigger ones. Um, this was appropriate for um, preschool age to school age. Also comparing, contrasting, and scientific method. Okay, sensory bottles uh, for toddlers for science. Uh, measuring water for preschoolers for mathematics. Um, art, paint, and use as a vase. That's about any group. Science, um, science play two to four year olds with planting. Uh, preschool age, sensory bottles, social and emotional. Five year olds, uh, twigs inside for cognitive, emotional, and social development learning. Age two to four, put colored water in the bottles, sort by color, use different levels of, of water so you can see the bottles are only a little or only filtered a bit or filled completely with colored water to discuss measurements, which would be visual and math. Um, and she uses E6000 glue to secure the lids on the bottle. I don't know what that is, but it sounds like it works pretty well. If you um, can write where you purchased that glue, people might want to know that. Yeah. So if you can write back and let us know. Yeah. Uh, preschoolers, what can you find inside and put in items and rice? Then they shake they shake, turn, and write items they find and ask questions. Is there more than one, I guess, more than one item in the uh, bottle? How many items I've, do you think are in the I, bottle? I've seen those. They're like an I spy manipulative. You can buy them, but that's a great idea to use rice and make your own. So basically, I think what you're saying is fill the bottle with rice and add little items inside the rice. They shake it up, and they see what they see each time they shake it. So it might be... I don't know, a small block or a button. I think that's what you're talking about. That's a great idea. Um, make kaleidoscope by making, by marking the bottles, cut in half and twist. I think you have to do inside, did you have to put them inside each other? But I'm not sure about that. That's um, when I would go to YouTube. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, sensory bottles for ages one to five, making a set for a child. You can use glitter, oil, water, and others, and put in colored water. Um, older kids put several items, and the children can use large magnets on the outside to see which items are magnetic. Ah, good. Uh, calm down bottles for social and emo for social emotional for preschoolers. I guess to let them use it in some sort of like a therapeutic way. Yeah, oil and water mm -hmm. bottles, I yeah. think, are very good for oh. that. It's kind of mesmerizing to watch, you know, the... Kind of like the old, um, what they call those? The lamps that when they heat it oh, up? Oh, lava lamps. lamps. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. I could use uh, a calming bottle some days <laughs> myself. Okay. If you get that glue at Walmart. Excellent. Thank you. In the craft you. department, three to, four bottle, three to four dollars a bottle. Nice. Thank you so much. Uh, use shakers with dry beans with two-year-old Monopoly game pieces work great for the look and find bottles. Oh, um, excellent. Smelling bottles for infants and toddlers. Mm. Guess if you do some little holes. Um, preschool to school age, cut the bottoms off and make slits into, into plastic. Used for painting with small motor and approaches to learning. Those are all excellent. Very really different, excellent. thank you. Excellent, thank you so much. And again, don't worry if you can't write all this down fast enough. Like I said, we're not going to be able to read everybody's off, but we will definitely try to get everybody's on the handout that I'm going to put together tomorrow and then we'll post. Wonderful. Let's keep going. So let's try it again. If you're like me, you probably have a lot of gift bags lying around. And again, these come in all sizes, shapes, and patterns. And so what, again, I would like you to do is think about an activity you could plan, the age group you would plan it for, and what it would address. Um, 
again, we're sharing our ideas because somebody's going to say, I never thought of that. That's a great idea. And that's exactly why we're doing this. So again, again, you're going to focus on paper shopping bags and they can be from holidays. They could be birthday. They could be like these that are just in different types of patterns. You decide, let us know what you're going to plan and what age group it is for and what developmental areas you would address. Okay, we've got one gross motor. Um, use it to catch items for a tossing game. Uh, cut into scoops or shovel for sand play two and four year olds. Cut into scoops. Oh, I'm thinking that might have still been back with the bottles. <laughs> oh, yes, that would be with the bottles, and that's a great yeah. idea. Yes. Oh, okay. All ages. Hide item hide objects in bags. Allow children to fill objects and guess what's inside. Science and fine motor. Uh, make puppets, all ages, art and storytelling. I would fill these with white elephant type gifts, something for everyone, and use them as a prize. The prize could be for answering questions about a book uh, you read or a movie you watched or working on letters, numbers, and using them as prizes. All age groups could be included. Okay, children reach into the into the bags and fill what they would try to guess what's um, in the bag. Color sorting with the bags with um, different colored popsicle sticks. Sorting by color and pattern. Toys in, toys in same color or pattern. For toddlers, school age, tear or cut into pieces and make collage, fine motor, art, literacy and communication. Sort by color, all different ages. All the, those are good, thank you. Excellent. There's so many things that you can do with a paper shopping bag. Um, some additional things that I thought of were particularly, again, thinking about your school age children, if you have them, would be how much can one of these bags hold before it breaks? Because we all know if you put too much weight in there, eventually those handles are going to give way. So you could graph it, right? You could put things, add, say, wooden blocks, right? And count how many it will take for the bag to break or different types of materials, or does it ever break, right? If you put leaves in it, is it going to break? No matter how much you put in there, or if you put sand in there, what's going to be that breaking point for that bag? Um, so again, there are lots of different things that you can do with these materials. Um, for infants even, just the sound that one of these bags makes can be fascinating. Um, and if you put something inside it, for a young a young toddler, just getting something out and putting it back in again is a big deal. And they all love to carry them around. Just carrying them around is a big deal. Um, so again, thinking about how you can use something such so common as a as a shopping bag. And again, a lot of parents or guardians probably have some of these lying around. And if you ask them to send them in, they probably would be more than happy to do so. Um, they're also fun and dramatic play. If you're going to set up a store and have a cash register and play money, um, then they can use them to pretend to go shopping. Then that opens the door for you to discuss, well, what are they going to buy and why did they make those choices? How much money is it going to cost to buy them? If they had a job, how long do they think they would need to work to make the money to buy what they put in the bag? Um, again, so many different ways you can scaffold fold off a very simple activity with a very simple material. Great. Okay, now we're going to do whisks. Um, I have different types of whisks in my house. I have a silicone whisk, I have a metal whisk, and then I have a teeny weeny little whisk. Um, so thinking about whisks, what could you do with a whisk and what activity would you plan? Again, the age group and the developmental areas you would address. Sherry? Sorry, I didn't take it off. <laughs> Mixing bubble uh, mixers and blowing bubbles with the whisk. Painting. Oh, I was waiting for that. I love painting with that. Um, let's see. Painting with whisk is always great fun. Just the shape of a whisk is just fun for little ones to see. All ages, I would add coloring to Cool Whip and let the kids whip, uh, whip them up for, 
to form the different colors. Then use the cream to create art and pie tins. That's a great idea. All ages. Infants and toddlers uh, put puff balls in the whisk and have them pull them out. That's a good, mm -hmm. just to make sure they're not too small, but that's a great idea. Uh, dramatic play for all areas making markers in play-doh making marks in play-dohs oh yes it would make very interesting marks uh, just pretend in dramatic play preschoolers mixing water while adding drops of food coloring <laughs> science math and fine motor and see what happens as you add more color too uh, water play and just whipping the using it in the water play table three-year-olds green eggs at dr seuss uh, cooking mixing with the teacher at assistant for breakfast and a healthy meal um morning i had a little girl with very cute hair put one of these in her hair one oh, time no. and gave it a few turns very dramatic <laughs> outcome that's a very good <laughs> yes yes that is a very good warning thanks yeah, for sharing yeah. you never turn your back on that's for sure thank you <laughs> Yes, again, there's a lot of things you can do with a whisk, and this is something you can also pick up at a thrift store, and or parents or guardians, family members may have extra ones lying around. They'd be happy to donate. Um, another experience that is fun with a whisk is weaving, and you can use thick pieces of ribbon, um, and I mean wider, not thick as in thick, and then inner, and they can weave them in and out and in and out. That's an excellent fine motor activity for children who are on the older side of preschool. Um, you could even have them make patterns with their weaving. School-age children would benefit from that too, because don't forget, even though they might be in kindergarten or first grade, they're still developing fine motor control. Uh, my son, for instance, writing was really hard for him and even in first grade. So an activity like weaving the ribbon in and out of that whisk would have been an excellent activity for him to, to build those fine motor skills in his fingers that he also needed for, for writing. Um, and then older children, your school-aged children, you could challenge them to use the internet in a meaningful way or cookbooks to find, an act, find a recipe in which you would need to use a whisk. Um, and if they're readers, this is an excellent way for them to practice reading in a meaningful way because they're using reading to try to find something. So, um, and again, the same thing with the internet. If they're going to use the internet and use, let's say, Food Network's uh, website has a lot of recipes. Um, you know, obviously one that you've checked out ahead of time that's okay for them to be on, but they would have to be able to read the recipe to know that they were going to have to use a whisk. And then they could actually make the recipe. So um, again, trying to give you some ideas for those school agers because if you're going to have them all day, obviously online school is not going to last all day and you're going to need things to do with them. So just ideas. Excellent. And one last time. Now we have blankets in all kinds of colors and that is again something you have around your house that comes in many different sizes many different textures different types of materials okay so we have blankets what could you plan with blankets the age group you could plan them with and some developmental areas you could dress and i'm going to challenge you right now to think about some skills particularly so let's think about Letter recognition, what could you do regarding letter recognition and blankets? I'm gonna challenge you to also think about science. How could you incorporate science with blankets? And let's see, how about math? Now, of course you can do anything else you wanna do, but let's see if anybody can come up with some things for letter recognition, um, science, and math for this one. Before you ask for science and math and letter recognition, the fir first one of the first responses: take a nap with, um, take a nap myself. I'm, everybody's <laughs> tired this time of night. I love uh, that one. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> That's about where I feel. Peekaboo, infant social, emotional, um, and ob object permanence. Fort. Uh, That's of course. That's yep. a great game. Um, use blankets to shape letters. Ooh, excellent. Um, 
Oh, and one person saying they're really excited to hear new ideas. Great, okay. thank you. Yeah, Hold, bear with me one second. Went the wrong, I lost the control. Make huge letters on the lawn with blankets. Uh, that touch would and be feel. How, yeah, how many kinds of textures? How many textures? Science, feeling different textures and using words such as soft, silky, snuggly, comforting. Which is also wonderful for building robust vocabulary. Yeah. Yeah, so we got some letter recognition and I think we got some science with just some um, touching and feeling and feeling different textures, talking about texture. Yeah, uh, that's all we got on this one right now, Beth. Okay, well, well I'm, oh, gonna, I'm, I'm sorry. Gonna, what Keep what going. letter does color start with? Does the color start with? I guess we're talking about if we got a blue blanket, what letter does that start with? That would be for your older children. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Let's see, science, tense, build shapes and have two children hold the blanket on each end and see how, how much weight they can lift by stacking stuffed animals, et cetera, on top. On top. Uh, maybe math, cut some of the blankets into different shapes, like four pieces, and then try to put the pieces back together to learn fractions. Uh, oh, that would be good. That'd be good. Putting things, putting things on the ground and having the kids look at the items. Then cover them up, cover the items up, and mm -hmm. see what the kids can remember. Parachutes uh, play, except, and use use your blankets. Mm -hmm. Okay, all oh, that's great. Excellent. Um, one more. I'm sorry. Blankets for, it just takes a little while to get it all typed in. Blankets for islands for letter recognition and how many islands for math, water, and water for science. I guess like um, pretending you're on an island and um, mm -hmm. um, letter recognition on the, I guess you'd put objects on the, on the blankets and try to guess what um, letter they would start with. All right. That's all we got. Excellent. Okay, so here's some more ideas. Um, you will need several blankets for this one, and this is for practicing number recognition and also being able to match a an amount to a numeral. So you would lay your blankets out, obviously outside. You wouldn't want huge ones for this, but you know, decent sized ones. And then you would print numerals on pieces of paper, and you put a numeral on each set of blankets. And then on your mark, whether you say go or you play music or whatever you want to do, the children choose which blanket to go to. And then they have to do a particular movement that many times. So it might be a jumping jack. It could be a sit up. It could be um, touching their toes, whatever you want to do. So it involves physical activity, obviously, but you're doing math because there is a connection between research has shown between actually movement and learning math. So this is a great way for them to practice it. Um, for your school agers, again, going back to them, blankets are made of different materials and have different weaves, all right? So when you hold a blanket up to the light, and we all know this because of our mask usage, right? <laughs> when you hold a blanket up to the light, some blankets you're gonna be able to see through easily, like these that this little guy's playing with right now, it look like a cotton blanket that has an open weave, while other blankets that maybe are fleece, you're not gonna be able to see through. So the children can explore the blankets based on how much light they can see coming through. They might even want to use flashlights. Um, you could also take this further if you had uh, blankets that were smaller and or you wanted to, they were, you were able to cut apart, you didn't plan on using them, where they could then see how much water would flow through at what rate, right? So pour water through the different pieces of blankets. How fast does it go through? Does it go through at all? Um, Sand, you could do the same thing with sand. Does the sand go through the blanket? Because we've all been to the beach, right? And we lay the beach towel down and we don't really feel the sand right away. But if you're there long enough and if you get wet and then you sit on again, then the sand's all over you. So those are the kind of things you could do with your, your school age children. You could also measure the dimensions of the blanket. Um, get out the measuring tape. How wide is it? How long is it? What is the diagonal of it? Um, for children who are working on 
more advanced math, that would be a great way to do that. So there's so many different things, again, you can do with these materials that are just right, you know, in your house that you don't have to go find um, other than maybe get them out of a closet. And yet they can be very robust teaching materials. So um, you all have done an excellent job sharing, and I'm definitely going to type up all of, of, the, of your ideas that we've done so far for a handout that then we'll post. So thank you so much for sharing. Obviously, this is really important. We talked about it a little bit with the lids on the bottles being choking hazards. A general rule of thumb if you don't have one of those choking tools that you can check to see if it's too small is a toilet tissue roll. If it fits through a toilet tissue roll, it's too small to have around anybody under the age of three. And I'm going to also say children like my son who like to put things in their mouth. And we all know those children exist. So they might be five, but they're still putting things in their mouth. So um, just keeping in mind that when you are using things, particularly recyclables, or even the idea with the pom-poms and the whisk is an excellent fine motor, but you'd want to use the bigger pom-poms with children who are younger because you obviously don't want the little ones. Um, are there any sharp edges, right? So let's say we decide we're going to cut the water bottles to make scoops, which is a great idea for water and sand. Then you might want to take duct tape and cover over the cut edge because it could be kind of, of sharp. I have never actually tried to sand using sandpaper the plastic on a water bottle to see if that would make it not sharp, um, but I know covering with duct, duct tape would do the trick. Um, and could it be used in any dangerous way? Sometimes children seem to come up with like the whisk in the hair thing, right? Like who would predict that? But maybe she saw someone in her home using curlers or even a curling iron and was, you know, acting that out and using the whisk as her curling iron. Um, so anyway, just keeping an eye, obviously, and thinking ahead to how that could potentially be something that might be dangerous. That just requires on your part diligence and obviously anything can be dangerous. So you just obvious we know with family child care, you're expected to be right there with them all the time. Um, so you just do your best to make sure that they aren't using it in any way that they shouldn't be. And then share, right? So um, Facebook is a great social media outlet to share your ideas. We have a Facebook page um, where we are sharing ideas and we encourage others to do it as well. Uh, Pinterest, a lot of providers like Pinterest and YouTube. Like I said, whenever I want to learn how to do something or I need to fix something, I go to YouTube. Um, and I'm not a YouTuber, but I appreciate that all those people <laughs> who are. Um, so definitely use YouTube and, and your social media outlets to not just just learn and get ideas, but share your ideas as well. Just like tonight, that's the whole point of this webinar is to share ideas and to learn from each other. Um, and and that's, that's really what it's all about. So yeah, use your social media in a way that benefits you and others, right? So what I'd like to do right now is pause for questions and to see if anybody has any other ideas of a material that they might have around the house that they have created some really cool, speaking of sharing idea, that they would like to share with the group. Because again, I will type all this up so um, everybody can benefit from everyone's ideas. Um, there is a suggestion where you were talking about searching YouTube. It says, don't forget to Google. There are all kinds of websites out there, and many of you have never heard of until you find them by accident. That's true. So true. Um, no questions yet. But also, just to point out one thing, that if you have a question after we finish, you can always go to our web page under customer service or contact us, I'm sorry, at the top right hand bar. Uh, you can contact us and send us questions or send us any sort of notes afterwards if you think of something after we finish the webinar tonight. Anybody have any really cool ideas of things they have used around their house they'd like to share before we, um, I need to go to our website anyway and show you where you're going to go to do your your um, assessment. And I also want to just touch a little bit on how at GWIZ, this is kind of how we do things in our curriculum is we use things you have around your house. Um, but before we do that, I would like to see if anybody has any ideas they'd like to share. Don't see any yet, but I do. I have a couple of people thanking 
everybody else for their ideas, that how helpful it is to hear new ideas from other people. Absolutely. Okay. Children use the uh, Lay's chip containers and children shoot the lids shoot the lids off, but we always have to do it on the door. I'm not sure I'm following that one, but. Oh, I, I, think, I think I think I get it, Sherry. So the Lay's chip containers on like a Pringles are a sort of kind of ovally shape. And so if you squeeze them in the center, it would make oh. the lid pop off. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, make guitars from shoe boxes. Um, see, I use rocks and wooden chips to stack as block towers. Oh, fun. Um, okay, this is a long one. Solar light strands and strands of light that take batteries make super gifts. Put them in glass bottles or even some plastic bottles. They love trying the various colors and mixing of the strands to get the colors they like. That's I actually have one idea. of those I use at Christmas. Um, let's see, we just installed a dryer vent from the top of a clubhouse to the lower level for the younger children and they talk to each to the older children up above at the top <laughs> of the clubhouse. That's a oh, cute that idea. Yes. And that is actually a very good point. I spend a lot of time at Home Depot because as Sherry knows, my husband and I get into all these projects. And I was in the plumbing area the other day when he was looking at something and PVC pipe comes in all kinds of shapes, sizes, connectors, elbows, and there's, they're very inexpensive. And I'm thinking these would be so much fun in the water and sand. Um, so, you know, if you lo were looking to add to your water and sand play, that would be a really inexpensive way to do it. The other thing you could do with those is when my children were younger, they had marble tracks and marbles are dangerous because they're obviously a choking hazard. But if you use PVC pipes, they're much bigger and you could use a bigger size ball and they could do all kinds of fun things with the balls in the PVC pipe. I was just sitting there going, oh, maybe I should buy them this. I could play with it. <laughs> or, or small cars, P, uh, PVC yes. pipes and small cars. Let them yes. there's All the kids love cars. Um, how about, there's this one suggestion. How about using foods that, could be associated with books, like Harold and the Purple Crayon, and make some purple slushies. Mm, that sounds and good. Slushies. <laughs> uh, I've used crystal light plastic containers and cut a slit in it. Write numbers on them and have the children put the corresponding numbers in the correct container. Excellent. Um, glue tops of the baby wipe lids on strong cardboard or wood inside the lids or different texture. Oh, okay. So you take the lid and you put different textures inside the uh, lids. Yeah, those baby wipe boxes can be used for all kinds of things. Your PVC pipes can be covered in colored duct tape and, or sand them a bit and paint. Paint may not be as long lasting as tape. Give older kids about 10 pieces of PVC pipes. Let them cover it in their favorite colors of tape and see what they can create totally on their own. That's a great idea. That is a great idea. Um, all making, kids love tape. Yeah, <laughs> adults Making homemade sorted scented Play-Doh. Sure my glasses are clean. Homemade mm -hmm. scented Play-Doh. If somebody has a recipe for a good one, maybe they can add that send it and we'll, we can add it with the um, stuff that goes out tomorrow. Yeah, we're doing a unit <laughs> called Super Senses in September. And in that one, we are making a scented Play-Doh using Kool-Aid, I believe. But I know there's also a recipe that uses cinnamon. And I think we've done one once with peppermint. Oh, good. Those are all great ideas. Thank you. Yeah, the point is that again, there are so many things that you can do with things you have around the house or inexpensive things like your PVC pipe. And um, yeah, you might spend a couple bucks to get the PVC pipe, but it's very durable. I mean, it's what's the pipes in your home are made of, so it's gonna last. 
and there's many different ways you can probably use something like that. So sometimes the outlay of a little bit of money is worth it because you get so many different activities that you can plan and developmental areas that you can address and even ages, right? So we thought of many different things for different many different ages. Um, so excellent. I really appreciate everybody sharing. Like I said, I'm going to take all these ideas when they are on the report and I'll type them up. But right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to close out of um, this webinar for, I mean, the PowerPoint, excuse me, and I'm actually going to go to our website. We have a lot of people on tonight who are not customers, who are not familiar with who we are, or what we do. We do have a lot of people on here who are customers, and I thank those of you, obviously, who are. If you are a customer, just so you know, in case you didn't see the email this morning, this, excuse me, September units are posted now, and they are super senses and taking care of me. So you'll be able to get those when you de when you log in um, in case you did not see the email. So for everyone who's on the webinar tonight, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to our website, gwizeducation.com, and you're gonna go under training and support to the tab that says webinar training. And you're gonna scroll down and you're going to see the webinar that we're doing right now, no money, no problem. Tomorrow, once we post the recording, this button's going to change to say watch. So if you want to go back and you want to watch it again or you want to share it with another provider who you think might like watching it, they'll be able to do that from our website. Here's a link to the assessment and the certificate, but if you click it right now, it's not activated yet. You're going to need to give me just about five minutes after we end the webinar so that I can go out and activate it to accept responses. It's a very short quiz, and don't get panicked, it's not hard, um, about what we covered during the webinar. And when you get to the end of that and you click Submit, pay close attention because a message is going to come up and say, thank you so much for submitting your responses. Here is a link to the certificate of attendance, and you'll need to block and copy that link into your browser bar. It's a PDF file. You'll be able to print it out for your records, okay? So basically what you're going to do is go to our website, go under the um, support and training tab to this page, which is called webinar training, and you're going to click on this link and then do the do the responses and then submit and then look for that PDF. If you have any problems and let's say you can't figure out um, you know where that was or you can't find the certificate under the same tab it says send us an email just fill that out and send it to us and we'll get back with you. Um, but most people figure it out. It's not that challenging. They really, it, it's not hard. Uh, you just have to kind of pay attention. Some people do it so fast and they don't realize they have to pay attention to the message at the end. So again, we're at gwizeducation.com. For those of you who are not familiar with who we are and what we do, GWiz is a company dedicated to family child care. We started back in 2012, and since then we have expanded greatly. Our curriculum is approved for uh, approved in many states like Florida, North Carolina, Minnesota, Illinois, Pennsylvania, Delaware, Nebraska. Um, and we tailor our lesson plans to family child care. So in our, in our lessons, we have everything from infants, toddlers, twos, threes, fours, and like I said, school age. It used to be until this month, September, we had activities in our teaching guide for school age children because most of the time they came after school. So providers were looking for something to do that was fun and yet educational. Well, now, given what's going on, a lot of them are going to have, you know, these children all day long. Some of you are. And so what we decided to do is we added a booklet of activities in addition to what's in the teaching guide that are more things you can do with school-aged children when they're not doing online school. So it's by no means a school curriculum, but it is supplemental activities that will definitely you know, be fun and engaging and keep them learning. Um, so if you would like to try us out, we are offering a free trial right now for 14 days. You just click the button and it'll walk you through the process. 
Um, if you would prefer to subscribe, you're like, this sounds great. This sounds like what I'm looking for. You'll go to sign up. You can choose to pay monthly, quarterly, or yearly. We're subscription-based, just like Netflix, where it automatically renews. Um, oh, sorry, my computer does this. It automatically renews until you cancel, which you can do at any time. Um, if you'd like to learn more about us, the best place to go is our catalog. In the catalog, we have all these different sections talking about how we address the 10 developmental areas, how we address all 40 different skills, how we link with assessment tools like Teaching Strategies Gold or Ages and Stages, what our outline is like for this upcoming year, there's a sample lesson plan, our pricing information. Anyway, the catalog is a great place to start. Everything we do is on our website. No shipping and handling required. You just log in and download everything that you need. Um, so with that being said, I want to wrap it up for this evening because we're getting really close to 8 o'clock. Again, where you're going to go in, in just about five minutes after I get ready to um, activate that post-assessment is under training and support and under webinar training. And then you'll just scroll down and you'll see the link there where you're going to click. Um, does anyone have any questions? Because like I said, I just wanted to touch on who we were because we have a lot of folks who maybe are not familiar with GWIZ. Um, any questions about GWIZ? Any questions about the webinar in general? Like Sherry said, there will be a survey that will pop up after we end the webinar. And if you can take a minute to answer those questions, it's very helpful for us. Um, the webinar will be posted on the same page where you're going to go get the webinar training. And that is also where... I'm going to go there one more time. Right here, we're going to post the handout that will have all the ideas that were shared this evening. Okay, so that'll be sometime tomorrow. So just come back to the site and you should be able to access that tomorrow. So any questions that I can answer, any questions Sherry can answer about either the webinar or GWiz, I'll take those now for just the last few minutes. We want to thank you all again for just coming tonight. And if you have any other ideas, I know a lot of you have been making comments that you really like sharing these ideas. Um, but if you have any other suggestions for different topics on webinar, please share those with us um, and we could try to address some of those. But we frequently try to do these training webinars to help you out. Also, on that same page where Beth was showing you, there are some webinar recordings there that if you are new to GWIZ and you want to kind of understand components and how we work, they each last about an hour, but take time just to review them. I'll answer a lot of questions for you. Um, more people are more visual and can listen to and see, see and listen at the same time. And it makes more sense than sitting down and reading a, a um, user guide. So it's right there for you. <laughs> Let's see. We do not, there's a question, do you provide receipts for sign up? Not for the webinar, but once you sign up, if you do, or if you become a customer, you automatically get a receipt once you set up the account. It automatically comes to your email when you put it in. So if I don't see any other questions, uh, we want to thank you again, everyone, for joining us tonight. And we hope you have a safe and um, good evening. And with that, we're going to say good night. Beth? Yep, and give me just a few minutes to go out there and activate the post assessment, and um, then it will be ready to accept responses. And remember, once you hit submit, pay attention, and you'll see the link to um, block and copy and then get your certificate. Thanks Perfect. again. Thank you. Good night.